each year in the month of May, 10 students from the University of Redlands trade their classrooms for kayaks and set out to explore the natural wonders of Palau. They learn about Palau's unique ecology, its natural history, and its matrilineal clan structure and culture. They observe the geological and biological forces that shape this magical seascape, starting with the mighty chitin, a primitive marine mollusk that quietly erodes the base of these islands by scraping away the rock as it dines on algae attached to its surface. Using kayaks, students can reach ten or more islands in a single day snorkeling as they go, observing birds and jungle and sea life on the meandering reefs below. When I first found out about Palau, I have to admit I had no idea where it was. I knew that it was an island somewhere, but I wasn't sure exactly where. I knew nothing about the culture or the people, and the only photographs that I'd seen were pictures of light blue sky and and light blue coral reef and um, I'd always hoped that a place like that existed but I wasn't sure and actually being able to go there and experience the people and the culture and the land and the sky it was it was something that I've only seen in, in really good dreams and it was it gave me hope that a place like that is is possible. It's been said that teaching is the art of assisting discovery Islands like these are great places to discover things about people and ecosystems. The interactions with the marine life were amazing. Being in the water with such a busy and diverse aquatic community really shows you how special and unique Palau really is. Everywhere you looked, life could be found. A tiny universe could be discovered in each delicate coral formation, in each crevice within the reef. And so while diving in Palau, I not only began to appreciate the unparalleled experiences that this place has to offer, but I think I truly began to understand what the word symphony really meant. During the expedition, students visit approximately 20 different snorkeling and diving sites. Among the highlights of every expedition are the trips to marine lakes, especially Jellyfish Lake. Jams of jellyfish numbering in the millions pulse daily across the lake in a massive migration designed to harness the sun's energy for photosynthesis. Using the symbiotic algae they carry in their tissue. One of the most famous dives in Palau is the descent into a large submarine cavern, reached through one of four gaping holes in the top of a shallow reef. Inside the twisting tunnels and chimneys that connect this coral fortress to the sea and sky, the students are inevitably reminded of how small we humans are in the bigger scheme of life. An important part of the Palau experience is meeting with scientists, conservation organizations, traditional leaders, and government officials to discuss their perspectives on Palau's present and future. These meetings help to convey the social and policy milieu in which Palau's future is being forged. But they also convey a deeper cultural understanding of what kinds of things we can learn from one another, sometimes starting with a simple dance. After three weeks in Palau, every student will have experienced wilderness, ranging from reef to rainforest. They will have explored dense jungle and historic battlefields, and planted trees to offset the carbon emissions from their travel. The classroom may be the best place to lecture, but Palau may be the best place 
to teach. And for nearly 100 students at Redlands, it has become the world's best place to learn. The inspiration for this course came from Mark Van Doren's observation that teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Throughout its 10-year history, this has been by far the most rewarding course that I offer, and the most difficult one to arrange. That's because I spend most of my time arranging encounters for students with native people, places, and natural systems in ways that facilitate discovery. My role is less like a classroom teacher and more like an orchestra conductor, trying to make sure that various streams of learning flow together like music, on tune and in time. Immersive learning is the organizing premise of the course, but the primary goal is to empower students in integrative thinking thinking about the relationships between complex environmental systems and even more complex human social systems. Palau is small enough that students can visit multiple coral reefs, rainforest, and cultural sites in a single day, seeing for themselves the interactions between villages and ecosystems. The Palau Expedition is designed to explore the concept of sustainability and its promise and limitations for guiding development. Using a blend of science, management, policy, and ethics, we study the sustainability challenges facing Palau. Students engage in what I would call braided learning, weaving together material from lectures about coral reef ecology and development trends and then discussing the roles of culture, governance, and social justice in creating sustainable communities. Service learning is also included at times. A typical day is spent observing and gathering information and data, followed by an evening debriefing and discussion that are designed to encourage reflection on the day's many teachable moments. They are also used to plant the seeds of learning for the next day's activities. For example, students will be asked to observe the interaction of certain marine organisms and told to report back at the next debriefing on possible explanations for the relationships and behaviors that they observed. They won't learn marine biology in any depth but they will learn some fundamentals about applied coral ecology as it relates to management of mangrove forest, or local fishing practices, or the long-term effects of economic globalization and climate disruption. My students love to combine adventure travel with interdisciplinary study, and I knew a course of this type would engage students but I wasn't sure it would produce the amount of immersive learning needed to justify the small class size and the extensive logistics required for field study in such exotic settings. I realize that this kind of course is not practical for many students, but I do wonder sometimes if we have fully gauged the lifetime learning benefits that most students would gain in travel courses of this type. Based on what I've observed, giving up a whole semester of classroom study in order to support one immersion course like this would be a great bargain for higher education. It can be the difference between training and transformation.